Welcome back to Franco Fridays. As promised, I was going to take you through a revisit for me of Macumba Sexual from 1983. I did a review of this five years ago, uh, and it's on my Just Franco playlist if you want to check it out. it's uh, I think it's still a very good review. Uh, I'm going to try to do an update to that. Macumba Sexual, 1983. So back in 81... Just Franco uh, ran into a couple in Bar Barcelona and they wanted to get into films. There was, was a husband-wife combo and basically they told him, look, we're going to give you, you're going to be able to do your films unencumbered. You can do whatever you want to do. And uh, it sounded great and they formed Golden International Pictures, I think is the name. And produced six or seven films, but unfortunately, uh, I guess these guys didn't have the liquidity to actually get the films out to the theaters because a lot of the films that were made with this husband-wife duo kind of languished. One of the films, though, that was produced and didn't languish was Macumba Sexual, which we have here today. This is this is the Severn Blu-ray release. Severn put out a DVD many years ago. And this is an update. The first thing I need to tell you about this release is the picture quality is unbelievable. This would, this would, this, I would have sworn this is a 4K uh, when I was watching. It's just a, it's just a pristine, beautiful, beautiful transfer. Unbelievable. Uh, the sound quality is excellent. So this is a vast upgrade from the DVD. Macumba Sexual stars Ajita Wilson, who was in a number of films with uh, Franco, and she plays a princess, an African princess, Obanga, who uh, she really kind of looks like a Grace Jones. She's got an interesting face, uh, transvestite, or as Jess Franco would like to say, an operated man. <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's a number of uh, muff shots in this, and she's she whoever did the do it did it as Franco pointed out. I think we did a good job. Anyway, she uh, she is a sorceress, and she has she has tried to lure the two other protagonists in this film, Candy Costner, which is which is an alias for Lena Ramay and her husband. Our good buddy Anthony Mayans, they're back, and they're on vacation in the Canary Islands, and they have been requested, or not they, but Lena's been requested, because she's a real estate agent, to go see the princess by her real estate boss. Uh, she runs into Franco, Jess Franco is operating a motel on the Canary Islands, and he plays this uh, goofball, Peter Lorre looking type dude that tells her that there is no Princess Obanga. She doesn't exist. Uh, Lena's unmoved, unwavering, and decides to continue to find o Princess Obanga, which she does, and gets knitted into this web of sexual uh, frenzy, if you will. It's not, it's not, I know probably me saying that, knowing it's just Franco, now we're into, we're into some soft or hardcore porn, and that's not the case here. Um, it's, uh, if anything, it's very much on the soft core side. There's always going to be some of that in here, but, uh, it, it's a wild ride, a wild ride of surreal imagery. You, the, the lines between reality and fantasy are sincerely blurred. I mean, this is probably, uh, from my standpoint, when you're talking about surreal, cinematography surreal films this is this is one of the preeminent surreal films period and i think i think other than um maybe andre jodorowsky maybe i just can't think of anybody that that can do a film like this and pull it off the way franco did the film opens up with lena ramay writhing around on a bed naked of course and and the, and then Franco cuts to scenes of uh, Ajita Wilson uh, and her muff covered up by a flower. So I mean, you know, you're in for a wild ride right out of the get go. 
there's some fantastic imagery in this. There's a there's a scene where Jita Wilson is uh, carrying her two slave servants across the desert. Uh, of course, they're chained and neck collars and things like that. Uh, <laughs> and one of them is a dead ringer for Will Ferrell. I mentioned that in the other room. I mean, he really is. There's a scene where he does like this ex expression like this, and he looks just like Will Ferrell. It's hilarious. And of course, their names are hilarious. Their names are Poppy and Tulip. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, what does Macumba mean? I talked about it in the first review I did of this, but Macumba uh, essentially means you're asking for protection from God. In this case, you're asking for protection from sexual enslavement. It's, it's a wild, wild film filled with beautiful imagery. Of course, the film was shot in the Canary Islands, which is uh, an area that Franco loved to film in, and it's just, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, lush scenery. Uh, another, another, uh, another beautiful scene is this camel riding scene uh, through the, through the fill, uh, I guess it's the desert, yeah, so there's a, to the extent that Canary Islands has a desert, there's, it's more like a beach, but yeah, it's beautiful, it does look like a desert the way they filmed it. The music is a fascinating blend of African Muslim influences, rhythmic tribal type stuff. It, it's kind of like um, the only thing I can analogy I could give you is maybe Brian Eno's ambient type music. Really un unnerving. The musical score makes this a very unnerving film. And, and we don't know if this is a real uh, set of circumstances. Is, is, is Lena actually meeting this? Ajita Wilson, is she dreaming it? But ultimately, uh, it's kind of a passing of the car keys between the sorceress, the princess Ajita, and she's giving the car keys over to Lena Romay to take over a sorceress. I think that's basically the gist of it. It's one of, it's one of Franco's best films, and it just shows what he could do when he was unencumbered and given free reign, even without a lot of money. Uh, I think it's one of his top ten films. And if you're if you're interested in Franco at all, I have a passing interest. This this film, this is one of the films to check out to get a real feel for what Franco is all about. What's we've also got on here a Stephen Thrower like an hour conversation about this film, and then there's an interview which I think was just ported over from the DVD with Jess Franco. One of the funniest things about this, you know, Franco talks about Ajita Wilson and, and she does have an interesting face. Again, she looks to me like Grace Jones, uh, but he, call, <laughs> he calls her an operated man. And clearly, you know, the film proves it. She was operated on. And, uh, and, then, and then it cuts over to Lena talking about, could you tell whether this was a man or a woman? And Lena says, "Oh yeah, you could tell." And and then it cuts back cuts back to Jess Franco saying, "Ah, oh, who the fuck cares? I mean, she's interesting to look at. <laughs> it's just it's great stuff, great stuff, and uh, highly recommend it. I give this a nine out of ten. This is one of his best films, bar none. I don't know if we have alternate. No, we don't have any alternate artwork, unfortunately. That's a shame. But Macumba Sexual." Definitely one of the best films Franco ever did. Certainly one of the best films of the 80s that Franco ever did. And, and I think it's a surreal masterpiece. Uh, along the lines of jo Andre Jodorowsky type stuff. El Topo is what I'm thinking of. I loved it. And revisiting, I'm really pleased to have this Blu-ray. It looks fantastic. Highly recommend Macumba Sexual. Uh, if you've seen the film or you have this release and want to leave some thoughts below in the comments, feel free to do so and appreciate you watching.